Hello friends from all over the world. It's lovely to be together. Um, we're broadcasting from Italy today. I'm Mahia, this is Arudra. And let's start with a prayer. Divine Mother, Divine Mother. Heavenly, Father, Heavenly Father, Friend, Beloved God, Friend, Beloved Great, God. Masters Great Masters of Self-Realization, self Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Babaji Christ. Krishna, Babaji Krishna Lahiri, Mahashaya, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Swami Sri Yukteswar Beloved, Guru, Beloved Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda we are here for you. We are here for you. Now and always. Now and always. Bless us. Bless us. And help us to become. And help us to become. Ever more perfect channels. Ever more perfect channels. Of your light and love. Of your light and love. On this earth. On this earth. Om. Om. Shanti. So as it was Swami's birthday yesterday, I thought to start with a little story of, of Swamiji that, you know, there's always particular stories that are particularly pertinent, that make you really think. And this is a story that I've heard several times um, about Swamiji. It's very, very simple, but it's full of, of at least full of power for me and, and meaning. So I'm going to tell it in a bit more of a generalized way. Um, so this was a conversation that happened between Swami and one of our Naya Swamis, our, one of our Naya Swami teachers here, so I've heard it from her several times, in which there was a negative situation that was happening. Uh, and this situation was manifesting regularly again and again, so it was a, a thing that was repeating. And every time this negative situation happened, it was interesting because Swamiji was incredibly positive towards it. And he, was, he would say, oh no, this will, be the, this will be the time when everything will go well, when there'll be harmony restored, when everything will just, you know, when, um, when everything will be restored back to harmony was basically what he was saying. This will be the time. And every time it would come up, that would be his his comment, and this Naya Swami, uh, my friend here, was, would every time be thinking, gosh, it's really, this is a really strange, it's evident that that's not what's happening. But she'd keep it to herself, but one day, she just came out and said it. She said, Swami, but isn't it clear that it's, it's, that's just not what's gonna happen, the same thing's gonna happen as always happens, this negative result, this negative thing, and Swami just looked at her, the way she described it, just so sweetly, but so seriously, and said, I can't afford to think that way. So this, is the, this, this sentence has kind of troubled me <laughs> and intrigued me for years. I can't afford to think that way. What does that mean? In that situation, if we look at it, it may, means that obviously, obviously, but... Um, really more obviously by what he said, Swami wasn't naive to what was happening. He wasn't not seeing what was happening. He wasn't uh, ignorant or... He was making a choice. He saw the facts, but despite the facts, he chose, he chose a different version of the story. He chose a higher version of the story, you know, to write the script. He was writing the script in a, in a higher way. So it wasn't that he was seeing the facts and then making the choice to rewrite them slightly in a different way. The facts were all pointing in the opposite direction. That This was a negative situation and very probable the same result would happen again. But he took his reality and took it in the opposite direction. So I, I think in this, in general in our lives, but in this particular moment, we could learn a lot from these words by Swami, I can't afford to think this way. There's a lot happening right now, as we know, and we're always talking about in our personal lives and globally. 
And the facts sometimes point to things not going so well. From the small to the big things, you know, maybe there's a maybe I lost my job, or maybe there's somebody at work who's really mm, not a nice person, maybe I'm having trouble in my relationships, maybe I'm stressed and I'm tired, maybe I don't have enough money. I'm having difficulties on, in many ways in my personal life. You know, there's frustration. And globally, we can say, you know, also many examples of things that aren't going, on a factual level, aren't going too well. But this is the difference between a fact and truth. And what Swami was doing, he was choosing to identify not with the fact, but with the truth. So the, the difference between a fact and a truth is that um, a fact is not always helpful. <laughs> you know, where we always say the more you think about something, the more it manifests. We, we are creating our reality. So if we're always dwelling on the level where the facts are, you know, this is happening, that person is, is a pain in the neck, and this is a difficult situation, then we're, we're creating more of that. A truth is beneficial only. A truth is never not helpful on the highest level. It's, a truth can only be beneficial, that's satya, can only be beneficial, and that's the subtle subtle but really, really huge difference. So in this, what Swami was doing, he was choosing to identify with the truth and not with the, um, with the reality, um, the factual reality. And this is something we know Swami did all the time. I mean, even with each one of us, with, uh, with, with people he knew very well what their faults were and the things to work on were, but he always saw the highest. So I'd like to encourage all of us in this time, myself included, <laughs> particularly myself, <laughs> to live more on the, on the, on the plane of, of truth and not facts. We cannot afford to think that way. Why? Because, firstly, it's just it creates a negative magnetism within ourselves. And maybe it doesn't even seem that negative, but every thought we have creates that magnetism. So we're choosing where to live. And in this, in this moment, as we know, is a moment of great you know, battle between light and, and dark. We need to really choose not to be able to afford to think in, in, that, in that way. Even if it seems all of the facts show that that's what's happening, we can't afford to think that way for our own consciousness and for the consciousness of the world. So that's the little um, story which I wanted to share with you, which has been a huge point of, of reflection really in my life and, and um, yeah, and really, really helps me to grow when in many situations, my nature would say, well, it's just a fact. I, I'm trying to choose um, the truth rather than the fact. So, enjoy to you, and now I'll pass over to Arudra. <laughs> so, we'll, we will meditate for a few minutes. And in that meditation, we'll use an affirmation of masters to really try and tune into that highest potential, highest reality within ourselves. And then we will use the affirmation that we all know to really try and infuse that light, infuse that presence, infuse also that ability, as Mahia said, to, to choose to look at the highest, both within ourselves and within others. One thing I, I really remember of Swami's is that when you were around him, even if it was a very difficult time, you always felt that he saw and that he brought out from you that highest potential. And this is a time where we want to be very compassionate and very we don't want to be indifferent. But at the same time, we want to help lift people up from suffering. 
And that's what Swami always did. He, even though he was completely compassionate, he didn't leave people in suffering. He would always help them to rise from it. So that's what we'll try and do. <clears throat> so let's sit with the spine straight. And we'll use a technique that you all probably know of masters for throwing out any negative states of consciousness. And let's do that not only for ourselves, but also for all of those around us, for our country, for our world in this moment. And what we'll do is we'll tense the body with a double inhalation. We'll try and trap anything that's negative within us in this moment. And then exhaling, we'll throw it out and leave the breath out on purpose. Hold it out for a few seconds at least. And in that moment of stillness, try to really penetrate deeply in the spiritual eye and try to enter that silence. And we'll do it a few times and then we'll go on. Okay. <clears throat> so let's do a double inhalation. Tense the whole body gradually, vibrate, capture that negative state of consciousness. And then exhaling, throw it out. And just stay in the spiritual life for a moment without breathing in. And then when you're ready, breathe in again. And let's do it one more time. Make that negative state vibrate in attention and then throw it out forcefully. And just enter into that silence, into contact with the divine, with God. And one last time. And then continue to breathe normally. Focus very deeply at the spiritual eye. And just mentally we'll affirm <coughs> these words of Masters from a discourse he gave. And try to really not only pronounce them mentally, but really make them infuse them into your consciousness. I'm immortal, sent to an immortal school. I am challenged by all the fires of the earth. I cannot be destroyed. Fire cannot burn me. Water cannot wet me. Breezes cannot blow me. Atoms cannot shatter me. I am the mortal, dreaming the lessons of immortality. Not to be crushed, but to be entertained. And try to expand that awareness, that consciousness. Of immortality, of infinity. Of being a spark of God's presence, God's joy. In his dream drama. Try and feel that immortal presence very strongly in your spiritual eye. And expand it in all directions. Let that light of immortality 
touch all hearts, all souls. Uplifting, healing. And holding on to that consciousness and that visualization very strongly, let's affirm together. First out loud, to really infuse it in our consciousness, to really make it vibrate in the universe. <coughs> God's light is within me and around me. God's light is within me and around me. With a sword of faith in my hand. With a sword of faith in my hand. With the love of God in my heart. With the love of God in my heart. I am a warrior of light. I am a warrior of light. I join my brothers and sisters everywhere. I join my brothers and sisters everywhere. To overcome fear with faith. To overcome fear with faith. Hatred with love. Hatred with love. And disease with health. And disease with health. We are all warriors of light. We are all warriors of light. We fill the world with God's light. We fill the world with God's light. And let's do it again out loud very strongly, even more intensity, even more willpower, even more devotion. <clears throat> God's light is within me and around me. God's light is within me and around me. With a sword of faith in my hand. With the sword of faith in my hand. With the love of God in my heart. With the love of God in my heart. I am a warrior of light. I am a warrior of light. I join my brothers and sisters everywhere. I join my brothers and sisters everywhere. To overcome fear with faith. To overcome fear with faith. Hatred with love. Hatred with love. And disease with health. And disease with health. We are all warriors of light. We are all warriors of light. We fill the world with God's light. We fill the world with God's light. And now in a whisper. God's light was within me and around me. God's light is within me and around me. With the sword of faith in my hand. With the sword of faith in my hand. With the love of God in my heart. The love of God in my heart. I'm a warrior of light. I'm a warrior of light. I join my brothers and sisters everywhere. I join my brothers and sisters everywhere. To overcome fear with faith. To overcome fear with faith. Hatred with love and disease with health. We are all warriors of light. We fill the world with God's light. And now only mentally, really infusing it very deeply into your heart, into your consciousness, into the whole world. God's light is within me and around me. With a sword of faith in my hand. With the love of God in my heart. I am a warrior of light. I join my brothers and sisters everywhere. To overcome fear with faith. Hatred with love. And disease with health. We are all warriors of light. We fill the world with God's light. We're all warriors of light. We fill the world with God's light. In feeling the power of that divine light, <coughs> let's chant three ohms really asking that light to infuse, to heal, to elevate all creatures, all souls.
Om Shanti. Amen. Thank you, great souls, for being with us. And let's really keep sharing God's light in every moment, in every situation.